Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards, and in this week's video, we're focusing on attacking drills. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe, and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're working on a pass and a movement, quick pattern, to then trans transition into a 1v1 scenario. But before we get into it, let's have a look at how many players we're working with this week, and the equipment that we'll be using. Now, in terms of players for this week, we're going to have 10 outfield players. Now, if you have two goalkeepers, you can just easily adapt that and have bigger goals involved. If you have one goalkeeper, when we go into other drills, we can work out a way to where we have just small sided goals and one bigger goal. In this area here, if you have a goalkeeper, you could have the one um, where they look to pass into the goal, which you'll see in a minute. And when we do a 1v1, it can be to go and score in the bigger goal. Now, in terms of equipment, we're going to be using balls, bibs, cones, and then if you don't have access to small sided goals, just use poles to mark out an area for the goal. Now, in terms of the setup for this part of the session, okay, we're going to have in total um, 20 yards of depth here. Okay, you can increase that if you want to as well. Now, the distance between these two goals here, okay, is going to be 25 yards, okay, and then it's just going to be five yards in between here as well. Now, the players here start on the cone. So these two players are going to dribble as quick as they can to this middle cone to start. As soon as they get there, they're going to put the foot on the ball, leave the ball, and then sprint to the next cone. As that's happening, the player behind them looks to sprint up towards the ball, okay, to get there, to meet it, and play first time to the, to the player here. This player then looks to open out, play to their teammate, okay, who looks to receive, to open out, receive, open out, and then play forward, okay? So you'll see that they won't be in each other's way, okay, once they've opened out. Then, as soon as that's finished, okay, in terms of these players' movements before we do that, once this player's passed that ball, they just come back to here because they'll be having the, the next ball ready to start, and then they come here. This player here just waits, okay? The coach will then pass a ball in to the middle, okay? The players look to battle it out, Okay, so then try and take the opposition player on and score in the goal. So again, if you had the goalkeeper for this part of the session, you could have a bigger size goal there, or even this side, and the ball can come over, and the players have to battle out to score in a bigger goal. As soon as we're finished, the player who's been attacking in here comes to the back of the queue. The player who's done the dribble and then the pass comes into there, and then the same thing happens the other side. Then we get the balls ready to start again. This player again drives into here, the ball, both players, foot on the ball, leave it, sprint out as quick as we can. This player is sprinting in as quick as he can. Now when they approach here, turn and face the ball. Move away from the cone to receive on the back foot to touch into space. So, because we're trying to do this as quick as we can, because once the first person scored in the goal, the coach will play the ball in. So if one side's quicker than the other, okay, they will have an advantage to receive the ball in the 1v1 scenario. Receive, open out, play in, play in. This player goes back to there, remember. And then as soon as it's finished, coach plays a ball in, players look to attack to get it. This way we're going to show some speed, okay, determination to get there, be a bit of bravery as well, to take the player on and then score. We'll now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session. Okay, so moving into part two of this week's session, we're now focusing on a small-sided game, which is focusing on attacking space okay, quickly in both 1v1 scenarios and in terms of moving the ball quickly to score. 
So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, we're gonna have a 30 by 30 box with a box in the middle, okay, which is gonna be maximum 10 by 10. Then you have players on the outside. So you've got your two teams, each team has two players on the outside, okay, on different uh, ends, two players in the middle, and one player in the box. Player in the box locked in, okay, they can't move, okay, so they're trying to receive in tight areas. The aim for the players in the middle is to score in any goal, okay, so we're playing for a couple of minutes, or you, let's say you have 10 balls, okay, you play till all the balls gone, or you play for two minutes, then the team swap over, okay, and you can swap over the players in the middle as well. So, the only rule is, is that when the players receive the ball in the middle of the coach, okay, they, there has to be at least one pass before they go and score. So they can't just get it here and score, okay? There has to be at, one, at least one pass. It could be to an outside player and then back in. It could be a quick one, two, okay, with this player here, and then they score. So it's a lot of hard work for those two players in there. There's quite a bit more running, okay? There's gonna be a few one, one by ones So it's about staying composed, getting the ball out of pressure, okay, to put to go into the, to try and score. So this player could receive here, okay, middle player's marked, okay, but then they can play to their outside player here, they make a movement, this player gets drawn in, we can receive in space here, and then we open out to try and score. So we're trying to travel with the ball as well, okay, to increase uh, to the chances of obviously this player following, and then when the next ball comes in, okay, we might have more space for our middle player to receive the ball. They could bounce it to the outside player, we make a third man run, receive it and score again. So, as soon as an, 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 the other team wins it back, so let's say ball comes into here, this player looks to play into the middle, gets intercepted, as soon as they've got re retained possession of the ball, they can look to score and then it carries on again. So the outside players have got a big role to play because they need to be constantly on the move on their line. So when one of their players has got the ball here, okay, can they provide an option to receive the ball? And then if they're gonna make a run, can they look to find a split and pass to another player? Okay, so making sure they're trying to play two-touch football as much as they can, okay, to support the players in the middle. It can also be that player's under pressure, okay, got a player on their back there, they can't score yet, they haven't made a pass, okay, just someone just to knock the ball to, okay. Then they could take a touch. There's no options in the middle yet, okay, so, okay, let's switch it to the other side. Then an option might become on, okay, even the middle player. Middle player receives it, okay, and then they can set into a player to score. So like we say, after the set time or the amount of balls that we're gonna use, okay, for the game is finished, the players will swap over. Same with the player in the middle. Now the reason these players are locked in, it's to increase their movements, okay, in a small space, okay? So when the ball's on one side, okay, where can I receive on the back foot? How can I support my teammates? So it gets the players thinking in that aspect, okay? Players in here in the 2v2, a little bit more fitness as well for them, being aware of their surroundings, uh, battling in 1v1s as well, can they look to take players on? How can they create space for themselves to receive the ball? So lots of little factors to implement in the session. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the final part of this week's session. Now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now moving into our second of small side games. This time it's gonna be focusing on moving the ball quickly to create a first time finish. Now in terms of the setup for this part of the session, okay, we're gonna have 30 yards of depth, okay, and we're gonna have 30 yards of width as well. Now you can increase this if you want to as well, but you want it to be quite tight, okay, so that the players have gotta move the ball quickly. Now you're gonna have an area, okay, which I'll have a player from each team. Now that player can swap over at any time, they just have a one player in the box, okay, at all times. So this box doesn't have to be that big, okay? It could even be just five yards by five yards, okay, or a little bit bigger. Now, the teams can use this player in possession. Now they can be tackled, okay? Players are allowed to move into the boxes, okay? But you just have to have a player near in each time. So player can receive the ball, okay? We're looking to bounce through, okay? We can get players moving in behind, close down, first time finish. So that's the one rule of the game, it's a first time finish. So small side of goals, first time finish. If a team, if you have goalkeepers, obviously you can do the same, it could be a first time finish if you had a bigger area. In a box, outside the box can be 
or seeing limited touch before you finish if you had goalkeepers. But for us, because there's no goalkeepers, we're just doing first time finish. So we're focusing on movement off the ball, okay? Also with 1v1 scenarios as well, can we be brave in these areas? Focus on moving the ball quickly. Third man runners, okay, to be able to receive the ball in space to score, not just receiving in these areas here, to feet all the time. Because if we're moving off the back of the players and receiving in space to meet the ball, we've got more chance of being able to do that first time finish. Okay, receiving to feet all the time, we're always going to take a touch, which cuts out the finish. So instead of players being static and always being where they can see the ball, okay, which is easy for the defenders. So once let's say this player's played here, once they played there, okay, and this player's ball's going to come to this player here, can they make a run on the outside? Okay, because then it could be that. They take this defender with, away with them. Okay, this defender might come in. We can set this player into space. Okay, can even get set across again. Or we can find that first time finish. Okay, so this is why the job of this player here is important. So when the player's moving around, can they look to protect the goal? Okay, not standing on the line, staying off the line. Okay, can they look to protect the goal so it's not easy for the, for the teams to finish? If they score, they keep the ball. If they miss, the other team gets it. Okay, when the ball goes out to the sides, okay, Whichever team comes off, obviously the team gets it. It's a pass in as well, okay? So straight in, passes in, okay? And then we keep the ball moving again. Can we get movement on the outside? So it's quick movements. So the defence has got to stay switched on and then we can look to score. Obviously then, when the opposition win the ball back, okay, let's say they win the ball back off a pass in here. Can we look to attack that space quickly? Play through, play through, draw the defender in, first time finish, okay? So try and limit our touches as much as we can. Making sure that we're staying twist on and focusing on our movements on and off the ball. Okay, so we might even make an overlap and run, okay, here, okay, and still not receive the ball. But then if it creates space for another player and then we can receive the ball, we're still involved, okay? So it's drawing the opposition into areas, okay, creating space for our teammates to then open more chances to score first time. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can sign up to view over a thousand session plans like this. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.